Hey everyone, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great and having a fantastic day. So it's time for week five of weekly Q&A where we get your Samsung questions answered. Timestamps will be down in the description. Let's go ahead and get started with this week's questions. Our first question comes to us from Dat, and I'm not gonna say the last name. Thanks, man. Are you using a Samsung phone or tablet? How is the experience connecting everything together in regards to using them with the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360? Uh, well, I'll tell you, you're hitting on one of the main selling points for going with Samsung, and that is the Samsung ecosystem. So yes, my friend, I do use Galaxy phones and tablets. I've got the S23 Ultra here. I've got the uh, Tab S8 Ultra here sitting right out of view. One of my boys are on the Fold 4 playing some games on it. So yeah, I am knee deep into the Samsung ecosystem. So I can make and receive phone calls and texts from any of my devices. I can send and receive files across all my devices as well. In addition to that, I can use any of my Samsung Galaxy devices as a second screen for my Galaxy laptop. And we also have multi-control that lets us leverage the mouse pointer and keyboard from our laptop and control our other devices. Let's go ahead and take a look at all this in action real quick. So here you see, I've got my Galaxy S23 Ultra turned on and I'm inside a folder. You can go in any folder on my laptop. I just right click on a file. And then we have an option here, share using quick share. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that real quick. And then it's gonna show my available list of devices up here at the top. I just showed you that I had my Tab S8 Ultra sitting off to the side, so it sees it. It also sees my S23 Ultra. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and double click on Brian's S23 Ultra. Here you can see it's starting to connect right now. This is a large file, so it'll take a little bit to transfer. Let's give it just a second. And boom, if I unmute it. There's a video file I just transferred from my laptop over to my S23 Ultra. Another option is to use link share. So what you can do here is create a link and you'll have two different options here. You can copy this link right here at the top and send it to any device that you have via email. So if you have a friend with an iPhone, a family member, or you just have some non-Samsung devices laying around the house that you want to send this to, you would just copy this link. Or you have the other option, if you have any devices around your house that have a camera on them, like an iPhone or you know just an Android phone, anything like that, you can just go up here and scan the QR code and it'll take you right to the files for download. So you have two cool options for getting files moved around between all your Galaxy devices from your Book 3 Pro 360. In addition to sending and receiving files, we can also make and receive phone calls and send texts by opening up the phone leak application on the Book 3 Pro 360. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. It's gonna show this what's new screen. I don't know why I keep showing that every time. But here's a dialer. We've got my recent call history right here. Um, I'm not gonna to go to messages because it'll literally show my thread of text messages just like it does on my Galaxy phone. But we can go over here to apps. And here's another cool option too. You see how we have our list of recent websites? On the S23 Ultra or any other connected device with Samsung Internet Browser and Samsung Notes, you can continue from your device over on your Book 3 Pro 360 and back and forth. Let me show you that in action real quick. So if I open up the Samsung Internet Browser and I just go to any website, ESPN, right? I'm gonna go ahead and click on there. Give it just a second. Look what just showed up on the PC. ESPN, ready for me to click on. So even your browsing, you can continue it from one device to the next. It's pretty awesome. So like I said, we've got my messages over here, we've got photos, we've got our applications and our calls. You can just make and receive right from here. Here's your dialer, so a lot of cool options. And while we're talking about linking up your S23 Ultra or other device up to your Book 3 Pro 360, if you go into connected devices on your S23 Ultra and you go here to link to Windows, you actually have a couple options for connecting to the hotspot and also for connecting with mobile data. So if you wanna use your mobile data or your hotspot data on your Book 3 Pro 360, since you don't have cellular coverage on this, right? We don't have any LTE or 5G on the laptop. You can just go ahead and use your phone while you're out on the go. So you have that option too. And if we open up Samsung settings on the Book 3 Pro 360, we can enable multi-control and take control of our tablet by using the mouse and keyboard over there. Watch, I'll show you. We've got the mouse cursor right here. You see it sliding over there open up the Play Store, have full control here. I've got it disconnected because it's hooked up to my camera right now, so it's not on Wi-Fi, but you get the gist here. I'm going back and forth, and this works awesome for controlling other devices. And the kicker is you're supposed to be on the same Wi-Fi network for this to work, but this is connected to my camera directly, and this one's connected to my home network. It's still working fine. 
Uh, you have to have Bluetooth enabled. You want to make sure they're signed into the same Samsung account. And typically, you want to make sure on the same Wi-Fi network as well. In addition to that, we also have second screen. So if we swipe down here to get to our toggles, we're going to have second screen right here. Go ahead and tap on that. We'll leave it just like it is on this screen. And over here on the laptop, we're going to press Windows and K. It's going to load up a little screen here. Give it just a second. Brian's Tab S8 Ultra. Going to go ahead and tap on that. Give it just a second. Boom, there you go. I just turned my tablet into a second screen and we can even take it a step further by pressing Windows P and we can change the presentation mode. Watch, I'll show you. So we can duplicate, extend, disconnect, just like using another monitor attached to your laptop, but instead you're using your Galaxy tablet. So these are just a few of the things you can do with the Samsung ecosystem. It really is awesome. Like all these devices just talk to each other, share files, your calls and texts, continue applications. Yeah, if you have any questions about this, please drop them down below. Happy to answer them because this is the part that gets me excited the most is getting all these devices connected, everything synced up to where it doesn't really matter which one you have in your hands at the given time. You know, you can do anything from any of these devices. Great question. Thank you. All right, our next question comes to us from Vady. Great video. I bought the S8 Plus tablet. And it's great. So I was thinking to buy the Book 3 Ultra and then I saw the price. Um, so I think I'll buy the Pro 360 instead. I would like to know how's the video editing, exporting video, rendering in graphical programs like Blender is. Is it really bad like I have to wait 40 minutes to render a great picture or export a 5 minute 4K video, etc.? Thank you. So great question. Yeah, so we did a video editing video. Boy, that sounds weird coming off the tongue. About the Book 3 Pro 360, I don't know, a little bit less than a week ago using DaVinci Resolve 18. And I was pleasantly surprised with how well this performed. So for a 10 minute and 12 second long video, it took just over 24 minutes to export. That's 4K, that's a 4K video. So roughly about two and a half times the length of the content, which is really good. That's outstanding for integrated graphics. And I had zero problems editing whatsoever while making that as well. Um, 1080p footage is really fast. I mean, you'll, it's pretty much one-to-one, -one, if not faster. So a 10-minute video will take about seven or eight minutes to render. Um, so for video editing performance, it's great. The thermals were low as well. It stayed around 75 degrees Celsius. Um, the only thing I can't really answer for you is Blender. I'm not familiar with Blender yet. I know that's a thing for doing all these animations and stuff, but I just haven't got into it. I am going to assume that it's going to struggle a little bit with that because that's very GPU intensive. Whereas DaVinci Resolve is more CPU intensive. So um, I don't know if this would be the best bet for you for Blender, but I will try to get that tested at some point in the future when I get more familiar with it. But for video editing, yeah, it performs very well. And I'll drop a link to that video down in the description if you want to check it out. I was really impressed. It handles video editing much better than last year's model. All right, so our next question comes to us from Queen Levine. And it's not so much a question, just more of kind of a critical comment that I wanted to address. So um, this is in regards to a 15 tips and tricks video I did that was specific to the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360. Um, and Queen Levine writes in, this is the first clip that came up when searching for remove bloatware Samsung Galaxy Book 3. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, but the video is, but the video I should say is about the Pro. Tips aren't relevant and no bloatware help. Uh, well, I'm sorry the video couldn't be of assistance for you. Yeah, this is specific to the Book 3 Pro 360. However, a few of those tips you do want to keep in mind, like enabling Dolby Atmos, that's a must. So anyone with a Galaxy Book, please do yourself a favor and enable Dolby Atmos. It really wakes up the audio on these machines. So I do feel some of those tips are helpful to you, but really when it comes down to removing bloatware, that's your own choice. I mean, for me, what you're going to consider bloatware, to me, is stuff that I use day in and day out. Uh, quick share, link share, the screen recorder, all the Samsung ecosystem software, I pretty much use on the daily. But if you don't want it there, let me show you how to get rid of it. You're just going to open up Add Remove Programs, and you'll want to start here. All right, we're in the piece. Pin up, uh, phone link, you can get rid of that as well. Let's go down here a little bit more. You can get rid of Quick Share. You can scroll down here and get rid of anything that has Samsung in it, but I would not get rid of Samsung account, and I also would not get rid of the Samsung continuity service. That's a service that kind of binds everything together behind the scenes. Like here's Samsung Flow. If you want to get rid of it, go for it. 
Samsung Gallery, you can blow that away because you can already view photos, you know, right within Windows. So you don't need that. Samsung Notes, if you don't use it, get rid of it. So just add and remove programs, look for Samsung, keep a continuity service, keep a Samsung account, you'll be good to go. All right, our next question comes to us from Joe. Hello, how is the temperature of the screen when writing in tablet mode in regards to the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360? I used to use a Surface Book 2 for note taking and the screen portion was always warm, even when idle. It was never cold. Also, how was the writing feeling compared to other 120 hertz products like the S8 Plus or the Tab S8 Ultra? I've been watched all your 360 videos. Please keep making them. Thank you so much, Joe, I really appreciate it. So I'll tell you what, Joe, um, in my experience in using this in tablet mode, which I must confess is pretty limited, I haven't noticed this getting warm at all. And I'll just say this, this year's model in general runs significantly cooler than any of the previous gen Galaxy books. It's running about 30 degrees Fahrenheit cooler. So the hottest I'm able to get this machine when gaming is up to about 100, 175 Fahrenheit. When I'm sitting here doing note taking and stuff with Samsung Notes, the temperature, no matter what I'm doing, is basically room temperature. Like when I put my palm here on the screen, I don't feel anything. It feels just, well, the table feels colder. So it just feels like I'm kind of touching my hand. You know, there's no difference. It's room temperature. It's kind of like your own body. And I don't notice that really increase it at all. So yeah, it's a good thing. Um, I'm definitely not noticing it getting warm at all. And as far as a writing experience, it's good. It's really good. However, it's not as good as a Tab S8 Ultra. That's my favorite. Nothing's gonna beat that, not, not to me anyway. Uh, the latency is just a little bit better. You have the air commands, or I should say the air actions where you can do the volume up and all that, you know, kind of gimmicky stuff, but it's still kind of cool, especially when you're watching videos and stuff and you wanna skip ahead a little bit or turn up the volume, you know? It's nice to do from a distance and you don't have that here. But your question is in regards to the writing and the writing's really good. It, it's very similar to the Tab S8 Ultra. It's just the rest of the experience that's kind of one level below it. But as far as writing, it's great. I don't think you'll have any issues at all. And you know, the, the pen feeling, like the pen on here, it feels great. Like I'll just start writing here, no issues at all. It's like very smooth, it feels great, no issues. So yeah, I think you'll enjoy the experience. Thanks for the question. All right, our next question comes into us from Harvey. Hey Raider Tech, thanks again for your reviews. My question is, how is a system-wide implementation a quick search? Like, can it really find anything everywhere on the computer, even in my Samsung handwritten notes? Also, please, can you run a real-life performance test with multiple instances of Samsung notes, OneNote, and why not 50 tabs of Microsoft Edge browser? And finally, with any demanding resources like a video editor or a CAD program. My last request is on the screen resolution. How tiny can I configure and set my resolution to take the maximum advantage of the space? working with those multiple windows at once. Like how tiny can I have my appearances? Sorry for the long request, just my workflow. Hey, no problem, my friend. So this is a three-part question. First one being quick search. The second one, putting a demand on the system and seeing how it performs. And the third one is to scale down the window spots to see how small we can get everything on the screen. So I've got the quick search settings up here on the screen and I've gone through this uh, pretty meticulously and we don't have any options really to search for Samsung Notes. Like here's all the indexing options. We can pick images, videos, audio, others. Um, but I don't see anything for the notes extension that it's not indexing, or I should say that it's indexing. And if we go back here and I go to attempt a search, like I'll search for like S23, that should pull some stuff up. Yeah, it's not pulling back the Samsung notes, but it is pulling back all my like video files and images that have S23 in it. So it, it doesn't cover everything, but it does a pretty good job. All right, and for the next part of your question, we have a 4K video being rendered in DaVinci Resolve 18.1.4 right now. Um, and if we go down here, I've got two instances of Samsung Notes running, right? You can see them loading up here. In addition to that, I've got Microsoft Edge loaded up. And if you look here at the top, you're gonna see, let me get it in camera view. I've got well over 50 tabs going. I think the only thing I don't have going for you, my friend, is OneNote. Uh, because I'm going to be configuring that later this week. We have a couple more Q&A questions about that that I'll be covering next week. But we've got everything else going, including this render that's happening right now. So let's check on the performance real quick. So we're looking at about a 15 to 20% load on the GPU, uh, about half usage on the CPU. Let's go ahead and crank this up to maximum performance. See what it looks like. 
All right, so we're in high performance mode now while it's doing the render. And if we look at the temps, let's check that out real quick. Yeah, it's cooking pretty good. It's about 85, 86 degrees Celsius, uh, but it's handling everything pretty well. We can also take a look at uh, Task Manager real quick if you want, see what that all looks like. All right, there's our CPU and memory utilization. You can see everything. I'll uh, sort it by memory for you once, and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, sort it by CPU for you once too, so you can see what's up. The fans are going, going pretty good, but it's still handling it just fine. And if we go back to the render, let's check on that real quick. Yeah, it's cooking along just fine, almost at the same speed it was doing during the video editing video when it was just doing this by itself. So it's not really impacting the render at all. So that's good to hear. Let's move on to your next question. All right, so in regards to how small we can make things, well, I've got it down to 100%. So Wow, it's even hard to find my mouse cursor. So all I did was I went here. Wow, I can barely see this thing. Oh my goodness, display settings. And I switched 225% uh, down to 100%. And uh, yeah, this is what it looks like. The text and stuff is really tiny. If I go down here and open up a browser window for you, you can take a look at it. Gee, me Christmas, this is small. If you can work with this and you have this good of eyes, more power to you, my friend. This is beyond my level. Uh, things are very, very small. I think you'll be able to get plenty of applications up on the screen at one time in all different windows, and you'll have plenty of real estate. I gotta switch this back. I can't hang with this, but hopefully this answers your question. All right, so our next question comes to us from Jay. Thanks for the video. My question is, how, do you feel any delay with the trackpad on the Book 3 Pro 360? I recently went to two different shops to look at the Book 3 line up and notice both times that all models, the 14 and the 16 inch 360, had somewhat of a delay on the trackpad, as if they were all Bluetooth connected trackpads. At least it felt that way compared to my Surface Book 2. No, uh, so Jay, I, I gotta agree with you. Every once in a while, like, I don't know, during this whole video, it's been great, but every once in a while, I will notice that it's not really responsive. But I don't know, I've kind of gotten a feel for it. You just have to have the right amount of pressure. You see here the mouse cursor, it's going pretty smooth for me. So I think it's just kind of getting familiar with it. But no, I do, I do understand what you mean. And sometimes when I'm on the outer edge of the trackpad, it can be a little bit jumpy. Like right there, it doesn't want to respond right there sometimes. And I have, um, I should say I don't have any of the like uh, Windows settings to like disable part of the trackpad or anything like that. You know, none of that funny business. I'm making use of the whole trackpad is what I'm trying to say. Sometimes it's like that, but no, nah, I don't know. For me, it's pretty good once you get that, that perfect amount of resistance on it. It does a pretty good job. So I think if you play around with it a little bit, you'll be okay. But yeah, I kind of get where you're coming from. Thanks for the question. All right, so that's gonna wrap up this week's Q&A questions, but I do wanna throw up the first question that we'll be tackling next week. This is in from Dima, a longtime supporter of the channel. Thank you so much, Dima. Good afternoon, please help me. I want to buy a Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360, but I'm worried if the Fusion 360 program can make money on it. If it's easy for you to check it, I would be very grateful to you. There is no such videos in YouTube using the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360. I think this two second video can help someone else. And yes, I almost forgot Fusion 360 is free. So Fusion 360 AutoCAD, this is a CAD program. Uh, what I'm gonna do for you is I'm gonna get a little bit familiar with this this week. I'll get it installed on the Book 2 Pro 360 for you. Uh, please do keep in mind, my friend, I do answer these questions in the order that I get them. So this is kind of where you're falling in line. The other people are right in front of you. But you will be first next week, so I'll get familiar with this CAD program. I'm a software engineer. I write, I write code all day, so I'm not really familiar with like drawing and doing graphics and stuff, but I'll get a little bit familiar with you. I'll grab a couple sample projects and we'll tackle your question at the start of next week's Q&A video. So if you have any questions for an upcoming Q&A video or comments about this one, please drop them down in the comments section below. I really do appreciate your time. And as always, thanks for watching.